the system of church and its impact. This is what the system of church does to most people. And I've put a gravestone here because there are many people who have died in this state in loving memory of an underdeveloped prophet. System of church didn't help him. In loving memory, or her, in loving memory of a teacher who never taught. In loving memory of a deacon who never resolved a dispute. In loving memory of a pastor who never had a flock. In loving memory of a kingdom, kingdom entrepreneur who never had a business. Because the system of church doesn't have you thinking that you can own a business and run a business that glorifies Christ. It just limits you. In loving memory of a bishop who never had his house in order. Yeah, because in the system of church, it doesn't matter whether you qualify. You're just a bishop because you've, you've been in church 20 years or you can be the deacon. Never, never preach the word, never resolve the dispute. But because you get this um, participation trophy or you get this legacy trophy or you can be a deacon, you can be a bishop. The Bible says, how can the bishop, how can a man take care of the church if he can't take care of his home? You can't be a bishop if your house is out of order. But the system of church will ordain you anyhow. Or you, you're in the system of church, people will ordain themselves. In loving memory of an underdeveloped evangelist, in loving memory of a psalmist who never led worship, in loving memory of an apostle who never established any churches, there is a gift and call on every one of your lives that God has established from before the world began. If you get caught up in the system of church, there is a very high chance you will not fail, fulfill your gift and your calling. You need to know God for yourself. Because God ordains man and man confirms. If you're waiting for someone to lay hands on you to tell you what you are, that's not the way it's supposed to be done. The man should confirm. And in fact, you should be doing the work before the man confirms. And guess what? If man never confirms, you'll still die a prophet or a bishop or an apostle. Because guess what? You are what God told you, said you are from the beginning. It can't change. The pastor doesn't decide what your gift and calling is. That's not up to him. The God never gave him that job. His job is to identify and to nurture the gift. So if the pastor won't recognize who you are, that's not a problem. Do the will of God. We have given too much power to men and have taken the power out of the hand of God to shape us and mold us. No man can decide what God has called you to be. God has ordained what you are to be. It's for you to find out and it's for you to, to, to humble yourself and God will put you around the people who are going to nurture your gift and your call and who are going to expose it and who are going to who are going to um, who are going to make sure that you fulfill your destiny and purpose. Yeah, God ordains man, man don't ordain man, man just confirms. I don't want any of you to die as a should have been prophet or a should have been teacher or a should have been business owner. I want to, we want to see that manifestation of your gift and your call. So there is a diversity within Christian unity. While the church is one, there is a variety of spiritual gifts within, sorry, spiritual gifts within, given for the church's benefit. Young people, I want you to be excited that God has a gift and a calling on your life. And I want you to start to pray. I want you to start to seek it out. God, what am I? What do you want me to do? Who do you want me to talk to? Where do you want me to go? Yeah. Grace is a spiritual gift. Every one of us has been granted some spiritual capability to serve God and contribute to the church's growth. According to the measure of the gift of Christ, Jesus determines what gift each believer is given and the amount and the measure of that gift. Two persons may be given the same gift, but one may have a greater measure of that gift than does the other, right? Wherefore, he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and some teachers. His intention was the perfecting and the full equipping of the saints, his consecrated people, that they should do the work of ministering toward building up Christ's body, the church. That it might develop until we all attain oneness in the faith and in the comprehension of the full and accurate knowledge of the son of God that we might arrive at really mature manhood the completeness of personality which is nothing less than the standard height of Christ's own perfection the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ and the completeness found in him so the purposes now some of the purposes of the church 
He's given these gifts now to perfect us, right? So that we are equipped to do the work of the ministry, to build up the body of Christ, that there might be spiritual growth and maturity, that we ultimately would be Christ-like. Restoring Adam or mankind in the image of God. The last Adam, Jesus, showed us how the first Adam should have lived. He reestablished the kingdom and established the church to serve as an agency to train, develop, and help all the individual parts of the body to know, understand, and excel in their unique gifting and calling. And, and, and I want to just go back and read what I said before. The church must help you to find and exploit your gift. That is the role, one of the roles of the church. So there's no one without a gift right? It must be, we must know what it is and we must help you to exploit it. Leaders serve to commission and help kingdom citizens to fulfill their divinely originated destiny and purpose. So that's the role of the leaders. The leaders are there now to commission you to say, okay, brother, um, I want you to come with me one day. I'm going to minister. I want you to see what I do, how I prepare. I want you to come, come, come with me a weekend. I'm going to show you how I prepare to go on the mission field. I'm going to take you on a mission. Not you're going to carry my Bible. That's, I don't know where they get that stuff from. You're going to come with me and learn and show what I do. Not you're going to wipe my face with cloth. That's not training. Well, we don't know where we get that nonsense from. That's the system. That's Catholic. Or wiping the man's head. Let him wipe his own head. Or let his wife wipe his head. Not wiping people's head and carrying their Bible. It's garbage. They do not... Leaders do not create the believer's destiny or purpose. Who you are and what you should do comes from God. This is what I was saying before. Leaders are called to train, confirm, stir up, equip, and send people to do the work of ministry. Yeah? So like I said, the leader, don't look to your leader to create your calling. If the leader calls you a prophet and God hasn't ordained you a prophet, you're not a prophet. So you need to find out from God and the leader should be confirming what you have already heard and what you're already doing. Yeah, a leader might come to you and say, you know, what? I think you, you, you're gifted in this area. Yeah, that's fine. But it's not his decision. If he come and tells you that he's, he, he should have got that from God. 